In this video, we're having a look back at this retro synth. This is a 1978 Gen SX1000. It was a cheaper, cheerful synth that was released in 1978, about 215 quid in the UK. It was actually available in some catalogues um, you know, where you can send it off for it you can, and then pay weekly amounts. It was kind of a budget instrument. But I picked this up in the late 80s, probably 88, 89, for 30 quid because it was wonky key and in those days people were getting rid of analog synths because they, they thought they were rubbish compared to the great new DX7s and things like that. So I, I, got, I really had an interest with those so I've, I've kept all of this. Actually it sounds pretty good, especially when you use a pulse width modulation and a bit of reverb. That's going through a uh, Boss Digital Delay, so I'm going to oh, turn that off so you can hear it flat. It still sounds pretty good, actually. It's a good synth for a beginner because it's very simply laid out. The single oscillator, uh, envelope generator for the filter and one for the, um, for, the os for the amplifier, which is not always the case in some cheap synths. It's got a uh, pulse width, which you can hear. Square wave and a bit of a noisy triangle wave. I use use it most of the time with pulse width, and then use the pulse width modulation. Without it, sounds a bit flat. If I, if I add it in, you can hear it sounds better. Great on the low tones. I'll knock it down. It's analog, but actually has a sort of hybrid. It's a DCO, and then it gets into some analog circuitry, um, uh, circuit dividers and things. So it's analog, digital, hybrid. That's why it it stays in tune really well. Actually, there's a tuning control on that, but you don't really have to uh, worry about that. There's no performance controls. There's no mod wheel or um, Pitch bend, the only option you've got is the glide button. And that's about it. You might hear as well, these, some of the keys, I think it's this one. You always trigger the filter correctly, so my job is to use a bit of this service salt and uh, clean that keyboard, which I've done in the past, but every now and again I've got to do it again. Some of these pots are quite noisy as well. I cleaned this one just before I started recording, actually. It was really noisy. fast attack to it as well so you can get some noise. You can hear the double triggering every now and again on there. It's quite good for the song. It's synth pop bass lines, but it's also quite good for lead, but I do like it for those longer envelope sounds where I bring the filtering slowly. Turn the resonance down, envelope attack. But it does actually make, especially go up here, for some nice lead sounds as well. So you've got a little pitch bend going in. And if you can get it, the usual, get that square wave sound. Not quite a mini mood, but it has got a nice sound to it, especially. But a bit resonant. You can hear the noise on that one, actually. So I'll clean that one, and that will. Help. And you have some vibrato by the LFO speed. So he has some interesting sounds out of it. There's no MIDI, there's no CV gate or anything like that. It is what it is. 
there are some uh, kits you can get for it that um, you can retrofit CV. I think you can retrofit MIDI as well. Yeah, you can hear a bit of resonance. And a bit squelchy. So you can get a bit of squelchy data there. And take bring up to the lead area. Of course you can control it. Initially, when they shipped them, they shipped with voice cards, which were like presets, but obviously there's no presets, which is a card that overlaid. I'll see if I can find an image of that on, to put on the video. I don't have these. I've never, I've seen them, uh, pitched them, but I've never actually tried one. I guess I could maybe print one out, but they were effectively gave you presets like trumpet, and it would give you the, the dials to adjust as well. Of course, something else should, you see these caps are missing on some of these. These are colour coded. So I guess you should have some caps, and uh, I've never been able to find that. I've never been able to find the replacement for the broken key either. There is a place in Europe that um, sells these parts, but they don't have the, the top C key, which is the one that's that's broken on mine. So hopefully I can find that one day. So there it is. There's my Gen SX-1000. A blast from the past 1978 not bad for 30 quid i still i still love it i still keep it active it is great for some of those bass lines especially at the lower end lower end i like those lower ends so there you go genesis 1000 1978